everyone. This is my uh, TrueRel 0.16 release presentation. I did the release um, just earlier today, September 19, 2024. I'm Daniel Stenberg. I work for Wolf SSL. That's my website. Uh, so TrueRel is just a just it is a command line tool for parsing, manipulating, outputting URLs or parts of URL. And I did a release uh, just last week. So this is just seven days since the previous release. And we've been at it for a little bit over uh, one and a half years by now. So this time where I added a few small things that I wanted to just mention for you. <clears throat> so primarily the, the biggest thing that made it not just a patch release is that I added a new option called QTrim that replaces the previous one called trim and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this because you'd have to be you have used true a bit to even know what it is but trim the dash dash trim option is a way was a way to to trim and I well I created that recreated that option as a way to trim any part of comp any URL component trim anything but we only ever thought about uh, query parts to trim so it could only ever trim parts of the query and now we've been at it for one and a half years and no one has thought about anything else to trim so i'm simplifying the uh, the usage of this by saying that trim is now deprecated don't use trim we use qtrim in instead and qtrim is then just a query trimming so it's dedicated option for just trimming query so uh, it makes the command line use uh, easier and you don't have to say query equals in, in on the command line option basically simplifying the, the command line interface and having a more dedicated name because it was already done for queries only uh, and then apart from that new thing i fixed a few things yeah <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily the right thing here to do, but I figured it is certainly the most convenient thing for TrueRail to do is to normalize the URL to a large degree. That means it URL decodes and URL encodes each URL component. So when you provide a URL uh, to TrueRail, it will output the normalized version to a quite large extent, meaning that if you uh, provide one with, for example, a lot of URL encoding that you don't need in the URL, it'll simplify the URL. Or if you provide some parts where some inputs that really should have been URL encoded, it becomes URL encoded in the output. So pretty much by just providing a single URL input to TrueRail, it will normalize it and output it, which is then a kind of a fun just feature in itself, just that normalize the URL. And for example, if you want to compare two URLs, it makes sense to normalize the URLs first, because if you get a URL from a user, for example, uh, you can not be sure that it can compare very easily with another URL. If you even if you ask the user again, right? Because you can use different casing, you can do different URL encoding, you can even provide the query parts in a different order and everything. So I know, and since I worked on these normalization things in the previous release was it yeah it was the previous one anyway i fixed some query uh, when it normalized the query parts of the url and then i broke it because it didn't really work for all kinds of queries so i did some back fixes there and i also now make sure that the the um, this kind of normalizing now always down case the hexadecimals uh, could that can be used in a url uh, in the URL encoding things. And again, that, that's that only matters if you want, for example, com make them as similar as possible in repeated invokes, for example, or if you provide different kind of URL uh, encoding input, it'll look the same in the output. And I also went through the documentation and I, I think I pretty much doubled the man page size. It has now like 400 more lines or so and tried to document and I, I wrote a new section in the man page for uh, all the URL components and some particular usage and, and explanations for each URL component. There are 10 URL components and, you know, they're fixed, they're named, but they all have their own 
characteristics a little bit and in particular characteristics when you use them or output them set them with rural and i think it was worth looking at them like that in the documentation and I'm, I'm thinking that the next likely release of, of TrueRail is, I was about to say to Carl, uh, the next TrueRail release is um, probably 0.17 or a patch release, I don't know. There's really no plans at all here for what's coming next. So I don't have any, there's no pending pull requests. There's, there are pretty much, I don't think I have any pending feature requests either. So. The, the future is uh, open and blank and I don't know. So it might take a while to the next release or it might not, I don't know. Uh, you tell me. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say. So I don't have any ideas really of what's coming next. Trural, the command line tool and the purpose and the, its intentions, I think it's, it's there now. It does what I wanted it to do and it does more than I originally thought it could do. So maybe we're reaching some kind of plateau here, but I don't know. At least it's there. It should be fairly stable now. And I didn't mention it right now, but I also added a whole lot of test cases this time around. I think I added over 30 new test cases. So we're over 200 test cases now, just to make sure that all that we're doing uh, actually works as documented and as presumed. I tried to go through the test cases and find options we didn't test and find options and some of the combinations that we should test that we didn't test before. So there, there is more to add there, but at least it's most of what is there and documented is now also tested. If you find any issues, of course, you hit, uh, run over to the TrueRail GitHub page and submit an issue there. That's what I wanted to mention about TrueRail 0.16. Of course, that's the URL. We, yeah, we host a man page there and on an online version, and uh, there's a link to the GitHub page, and uh, you can also download it from there because nowadays we generate man page. Uh, we generate tarballs for downloads since the, we generate the man page, for example, because the NROF version of the man page, the one you usually watch with the man command line, uh, it's not actually in Git because it's generated at release time from the markdown version. Now, you know, <clears throat> that's, that could be a reason why you want to get the tarball version and not just the tagged one from Git. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with another true release in the future. Have a good day.